Mm, yeah, continue. Continue. Investigation day two. Load. Yes. Hello there, Kid Boo. Welcome. I hope you're doing well tonight. Okay, right anything agency. Okay. Oh, I got a voice act. Oh my god. Okay. Sorry, boss. I couldn't do it. You know, that little bit of advice you gave me? The worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. I don't know exactly what you meant, but there was no way I could force a smile in that courtroom today. I'm just glad you remembered that. But now, how about relaxing a little? Re relax? Not gonna happen. Junie. Ugh. She asked me to defend her because she believes in me. But I... I felt completely helpless. If it weren't for their confessions, I'd... Oh, this bitch. <laughs> but if this trial proceeds in the same manner and ends in the same way as the mock trial, would you not lose everything you worked so hard to gain? Well, I'll just have to make sure that doesn't happen then, won't I? No, I can't lose it all. Not now. You okay, Athena? You're turning kind of pale. I can't just stand around here. I'm gonna go finish the investigation. Can it wait? I just took a batch of freshly baked cookies out of my magic panties. Yep, that did say magic panties. Okay. Uh, thanks. But I'd better get going. Save me one for when I get back. Apollo, you wait here. I need to see Junie at the detention center first right away. No, wait. I'm going with you. Sorry, Mr. Wright, but I'd better go too. No problem. You too be careful. Magic panties, yep. She has it. So she's a magician. She has a magic act where she has like a pair of like, they're like bloomers basically. They're like giant, like, um, like prop panties. Uh, and she uses them as part of her magic act. <laughs> uh, okay. Sorry, I already need lip chap and I haven't even, like, <laughs> done much talking yet. Uh, there's so much I need to ask Junie. What happened in court today? Where, uh, where we go from here? Ah, oh, this bitch, no! Well now, fancy meeting you here. Oh, Professor Means, what brings you here? I asked him to come. He arrived just a little before you. I wanted to ask him something, but first, Athena... I want to apologize for my sudden confession after you worked so hard to defend me. She was calling me Thena until just now. No, I should be the one apologizing. The whole thing spiraled out of my control. Athena, I... Don't worry! I'll really bring it tomorrow. I'll find something to prove your innocence. About that... Athena... I've been thinking of asking Professor Means to defend me. Huh? This bitch? Seriously? I myself only just heard of this a moment ago. Oh, so she thinks Professor Means would be... No, I can't let this happen. Not with the way he wants to do things. J Junie! I know, Athena, but will you please hear me out? No. Yeah, I know, this is Athena's, like, first, like, case that she is heading up. Damn. Okay. Um, we always present our lawyer's badge first. That's your attorney's badge, isn't it? I really envy you, you know. That gold sunflower really suits you. Thanks, but I know you'll make a fabulous judge someday, Junie. Uh, thank you, but... Even if I become a judge, I'll never have one of those sunflower badges. Oh, we've already heard this. 
<laughs> Wait, so she only envies me for the badge? Okay, let's talk. Why change lawyers? Yeah, why are you dropping me? Athena, do you actually think you or Robin could have committed this crime? The body was moved right before the mock trial. Besides, Junie, they're the only ones who could move freely around the campus at that time. I'm sorry, Junie, but at this point, I can't rule them out. I was afraid you'd say that. Juniper is seeking a lawyer who can clear all three of their names. Only I am capable of such such a feat. But but how can you possibly prove that all three of them are innocent? I am a results-oriented person. Come tomorrow, I won't fail to have the perfect piece of evidence ready. For the end really does justify the means, especially for me, Professor Aristotle Means. So lame. <laughs> Ugh. I really don't like the sound of that. I'm sorry, but... Just as you believe I'm innocent, I believe that my friends are innocent, too. Alright. If that's how you really feel, we'll respect your decision. Uh, Apollo! But we want to continue our investigation. Could we ask some more questions? Sure, I don't mind. Professor Means, would you like to stay and join our conversation? Yes, of course. I am your lawyer, after all. There's that smile again! Why does it always creep me out? It is extremely creepy. <laughs> it is awful. Okay. Yep, anime villains. <sighs> okay. Why did you confess? About your confession, Junie. It's not true, is it? You just said what you did because Robin had confessed on the stand, didn't you? Yes. I wasn't thinking straight. All I knew was I had to help my friend. Uh, you mean because of that school rule? The one that says you can't graduate if you are convicted of a crime? No, I didn't do it because of some rule. I did it because she's my friend. <laughs> Why is there discord in her voice again? Could it really be that the friendship between the three of them is on the rocks? Uh, there's more here than meets the eye. Okay, the trio's friendship. When did you three first become friends? Well... <sighs> ah, flashback time. Even though we were in different courses, we really bonded from the first day at school. We vowed to work together to bring an end to the dark age of the law. That was when our proof of friendship came about. There's that proof of friendship thing again. I just wish I knew it, uh... I just wish this were as simple as that. <laughs> we even have proof of our friendship. Yeah, what does that mean? Yeah! As long as our friendship lasts, you can bet we'll be carrying them around. Oh, do they have, like, pendants or something? Oh, is that this? Oh, you can't see my mouse. Anyway. <laughs> um... But the situation kind of changed recently. When the school's policy shifted to training legal professionals who produce results. Allow me to explain. In the lawyer course I teach, producing results means winning trials. 
Professor Court, on the other hand, taught that finding the truth was the only valid result. Of course it fucking is! Are you serious? <laughs> Why is this even up for debate? Unfortunately, that clash of ideas created a rift among our students. At some point, we stopped talking about it. Well, that meant fewer arguments. It also meant that we couldn't be as frank and open with each other as we used to be. I think I understand now. By putting their friendship on a pedestal, they actually did more harm than good. It seems the relationship between the three of them isn't as simple as I thought. Juniper, thank you for talking to us about this difficult subject. Yeah, thanks, Junie. Now, if you could tell us about the day of the murder... Tell me about the day of the murder. Junie, you told us yesterday that you went home a little after 6 p.m. Was that a lie? I'm sorry I didn't tell you this before, but... What actually happened was I left the art room a little after 6 p.m. and... Headed over to my dressing room, where I worked on my stage costume until 7. That's it? You didn't go anywhere else? No, nowhere else. Uh, if that really were it, then there would be no reason to lie in the first place. She's gotta be hiding something else. Junie, do you remember this picture? Yes, but something's wrong here. Wrong? What's wrong? I took this picture at around 6, uh, which was before I'd left the art room. But the clock here says it's just after 7. Oh, fuck. Oh, damn. Someone changed the clocks because they were planning a murder. Uh, by 7, I'd already been working in my dressing room for some time. So there's definitely something wrong with the time in this picture. That or it's like daylight savings or something. <laughs> um... Hmm... I, well, I guess we'd better go check out the art room. Okay, and uh, just one last question about the day of the murder. Encountering O'Connor. On the evening before the mock trial, the evening of the murder, you ran into Hugh. Yes, I did. At around 7.15, I went into the main building before going home. That's when I saw Juniper. We didn't say much as we passed by each other. She seemed her usual self. That's it. Anything else you'd like to ask? She suddenly went silent. She always was terrible at hiding things. Was she trying to keep their meeting a secret by lying about going home at 6? Alright, I won't press the matter any further. Is there anything else you noticed on the night of the murder? Well, I don't know if this will help, but... That evening, I went back to my dressing room to get something I'd forgotten there. It was well after the last bell rang. I'd say... maybe... around 8.30? Around 8.30, huh? That's over an hour after when the crime supposedly took place. That's when I noticed that both stage statues were finished. They were quite large and they were each covered with a white sheet, but I could tell. It made me happy to think of that after all the hard work, they were finally finished. Oh, right! The statues that Robin made! So they were covered in white sheets? Junie, are you okay? Sorry, I'm, I'm a little tired, that's all. <sighs> Athena, I think this meeting's over. Professor Means. I will use any means possible to get to the, to get the result I want in Juniper's case. But it will require considerable preparation, so I must be off. Off to forge evidence! Junie! 
And Professor Means, I have a proposal. A proposal? Wait, this isn't another one of your crazy. By by sundown today. Y yes. I, Athena Sykes, along with Apollo Justice. W wait a second, don't drag my name into. We're gonna discover the truth behind this murder mystery. Uh, what? And we're gonna bring you solid evidence showing just what that truth is. I see. So, ha it has come to this, has it? Uh, if we succeed in doing that, I want you to promise that you'll accept it, Junie, no matter how hard it is to hear. Then, you shouldn't need anyone else to defend you except me. Have we got a deal? I trust that's okay with you too, Professor Means. I have no objections as long as Juniper is satisfied with this arrangement. Okay, but only if it's the real truth. I'm sorry to put you through this, Athena, but thank you. Yeah, Athena is back, baby! I've been thinking only of myself in this- uh, only of myself this whole time. Junie, it's way too early to thank me. But you can thank me all you want once I get to the bottom of this. Very well. I will see you back here at sundown. Uh, his name is Aristotle Means. Um, so that he can be like... <laughs> the end justifies the means. Is that what it is? Is that the quote? Fucking... Whatever, that guy's, a, the guy's an asshole. <laughs> Welcome, Battleshoe. I hope you're doing well tonight. <laughs> um... Sorry for all the trouble, Professor. It's just, she's new to the agency, so... Don't be silly. I find it all rather thrilling. Now, let us meet here again later. If you'll excuse me, I'd better go. Okay. See you later. What if this trial proceeds in the same manner as it ends in the same- Eh, wow. And ends in the same way as the mock trial. Would you not lose everything you've worked so hard to gain? I hate his creepy smile. <laughs> Ugh, there's no time to be thinking about that. I've got an investigation to do. I will find the truth by sundown, no matter what. Can we talk to Apollo? Yeah, any ideas? Oh, I need some water. I've been talking like nonstop for 15 minutes. <laughs> hmm. Thank you, water. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, that's actually, that's really good. That's some good stuff. Okay, part of Aristotle's ideology was that the end justifies the means, but his definition of end was living a happy life, which in his opinion could only be done through reason and virtue, so it seems he could be named Machiavelli more than Aristotle. Cool. Thank you, Indie Villain, for that information. <laughs> I appreciate that. I don't know anything about any of that, so that's appreciated. Uh, only the three mock trial participants could have moved the body before it started. You just used your degree. Yo! <laughs> yeah, where's plans? <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> okay, that's why the killer must be Robin, Hugh, or Juniper. Right. And that means at least one of them is lying. To make matters worse, I have a feeling each of them is hiding some sort of secret. 
We'll have to bring it all to light. I'm not looking forward to it, but it has to be done. About the murder. Today's trial focused on the day of the crime and the actions of those involved. Yeah, like when the voice was recorded and who went to the art room and when... If we analyze the info we have, we should be able to ID the killer. There's no lead in these le- There's no lead. There's no lead in these legs. I've been training for a day like this. Okay, on my mark. Ready, set... No running from me. I'm done trying to keep up with you. <laughs> Good expression. Thanks, Apollo. <laughs> okay, um... Let's go look at the stage for clues first, maybe? Oh, fuck. Hey, look, it's, it's fucking Miriam over here in her box. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Ah! Oh, man. Is it my imagination or did something just move? Oh, I, I wasn't expecting to see Clavia here. Oh, I. <laughs> Afternoon, you two. Prosecutor Gavin, what are you doing here? Don't you think sneaking onto campus is, like, just, like, slightly suspicious? I'll have you know I'm continuing my investigation in the strictest of confidence. Uh, I don't want to be caught napping again in tomorrow's trial. And that means a thorough investigation today. Think you can lend us a hand? I'm not one to refuse a damsel in distress. But you needn't have asked for a line. I'd intended to help from the start. You're the best prosecutor, Gavin. Okay, time for a thorough investigation. I bet we missed lots of stuff yesterday. No, hold on, we're gonna talk to, uh, Clavier first. Prosecutor Gavin, you were scheduled to perform at the school festival, weren't you? That's right, but I hadn't seen this stage until yesterday. That backdrop with the starry sky and big crescent moon isn't half bad. We also had some tricks up our sleeve to make the concert really rock. Pyrotechnics, a fog machine, big banners, things like that. It would've looked like this. Oh! The plans from yesterday! What's that design on the banner there in the back? Um, I know the scales are the school emblem, but what's with the number six? It looks like it's in serious pain or something. <laughs> uh, Athena, ixnay on the ixay. That's the Gavineer's logo for a line. Oh, and nice pig Latin hair forehead. Real smooth. Oh, I, uh, I, I meant it looks like the number six rocking seriously hard. Nine for a line. It's a G for Gavineers. Not a six, but whatever floats your pretty boat. So, where is the banner? I don't see it anywhere on stage. It was an important part of the show, but the school managed to misplace it somehow. It's a pity. We had it specially made from heavyweight, high-grade cloth. Uh-oh. A missing banner? Hmm... They did miss the opportunity to make the 69th uh, annual school festival, yep. <laughs> a missing banner and two broken statues. There are mysteries aplenty to be solved, yeah. Come to think of it, one of the broken statues was a professor- uh, Prosecutor Gavin. As you can see here in the stage plans. Right here, we have the statue of me. And right here, Hair Wright's statue. But little does that matter now, as we both lie in pieces thanks to you. Hair forehead. What did I ever do to you? <laughs> Actually, the statue broke into rather large pieces. 
Why don't we try to put it back together? Maybe we'll learn something new. Hmm, picking up the pieces of a shattered rock star. Octung, that's one uber cool idea. There might even be a song in there somewhere. Yay! Okay, let's do this. Schnell! I don't know what that, that probably means, like, right away! <laughs> in German! <laughs> Is this an investigation or am I interrupting a German language club social event? Okay. Um, I guess it's time to examine stuff. Okay, I want, I'm gonna examine Miriam, but I'm gonna wait a bit. Chanel is fast. Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Battleshoe, for that. Uh, 67th? Wow, this school festival goes way back. It could go, like, two... It could be two years older, though. <laughs> oh, look. The text on this sign isn't written. It's embroidered. And there's a warning in even smaller embroidery. Embroidered sign lovingly crafted by the Handicrafts Club. Keep dry. But the sign's outside. What happens if it rains? That's very cool. That's really cool. Okay. I don't know. This is fine for a rock concert, but... The nighttime sky is a backdrop for a courtroom. Personally, I think it's breathtaking. I mean, speaking the truth under a starry sky. Don't you think it's romantic, Froline? And the waning crescent moon represents the maximum three-day trial cycle. Three-day trial of doors? No thanks. If it starts raining, my hair will be ruined. What about here? Wow, they built a witness stand too, even though it's just a temporary stage. Oh, but I think they're still working on it. Let's see what this notice says. Caution. Pedestal features a high-speed rotation mode. Activate with care. You mean this thing spins? Oh, fuck. It's a bit too far away to get a good look. Maybe we should try a different angle? Okay, so I gotta recheck that later. Um, let's check this. There's even a prosecutor's bench here on the stage. Ah, uh, the memories, Frohlein. As a former rock star and a prosecutor, the prosecutor's bench has taught me much about human emotions, passion, and fight. I can picture it now. You with your silvery singing voice and Apollo sweating bullets. Hey, how about picturing me winning once in a while? I think Apollo's jealous. <laughs> Clavier's too smooth. Okay, over here. Wait, you don't think this weird box here is, uh... Hands off. I knew it. I know that voice anywhere. Let's just ignore it. I mean, it made its wishes loud and clear. So, this is the future cardboard box technology has afforded us. Uh, this is the future that cardboard box technology has afforded us. Huh. Athre uh, uh, Athena throwing shade is so good. It is. I love Athena. Okay, I guess we're gonna switch over to another... Uh, angle. Okay, there's a lot of stuff to look at. I'm gonna have some water. <laughs> this is very good. I found one! A piece of Prosecutor Gavin's shattered pride! Are you saying my pride is, is as fragile as, a, as plaster of Paris? It looks like there are other large pieces scattered about. Okay, uh, let's just find what we can. Okay. There's one. Uh, there's one over here. 
The other statue Robin made, it's been smashed to bits. If there were some larger pieces, we might be able to put this one back together too. Yeah, but all I see are itty bitty ones. I wonder what Mr. Wright would think. If he knew we put Prosecutor Gavin's statue back together, but left his like this. We could always come back to it after the case is solved. I'll help you fix it. Oh, this is- this is Clavier's, um... Uh, the guy in the purple suit. It's- it's his theme song. <laughs> He's a rock star, so this- this is, yeah, rock music. Uh, the winner of the mock trial was to take the training seminar right here. You mean you were Robin? Yeah, besides Junie, they're the only ones who could move freely around the campus. Before the mock trial, that means, uh... Oh, before the mock trial. That means one of them must be the killer. It's not, that's not really enough to go on, is it? We need to talk with Juniper one more time and persuade her to give us a name. Right, and that means we'll have to find irrefutable evidence before the day ends. There's no time to lose, but we can't rush it either. Efficiency is the key. Okay. What else can I look at? This. Examine. Oh, it's just another view. Okay, oh, there's one up here. Found another piece of the statue! But there should still be some more. Let's leave no stone unturned. Purple fragment. Ooh, I like the view. The judge can look down on everything from up here. Yeah, not bad for a temporary stage. Hmm. Is that so, Mr. Justice? Your judge act from the mock mock trial? I don't know why, but it kind of creeps me out. Wrong answer again, Mr. Justice. A penalty for our mock lawyer. Ah, that's not funny. Uh, okay, how do we get down from here? <laughs> Back. There we go. Okay, I know there's one right here as well. Found another piece of the statue. Uh, but there should still be some more. Let's leave no stone unturned. Oh, more, okay. Uh, we also, we should go around the other side, I guess, right? See if we can see it from over here. Yep. piece of the statue! But there should still be some more. Uh, this is the same dialogue. Okay, we're just picking it up. We're just searching for it. No new dialogue. Wait, is this new? Yep, we need to look at this. It's a copy of the school paper with that story about the alleged love triangle. I wonder if people really waste their time reading this stuff. It's more popular than you think. What was that? I thought I heard something just now. You, you're just hearing things. It was nothing more than your ears playing tricks on you. Uh, more pieces. Oh. <laughs> oh no! Prosecutor Gavin, you're a complete wreck! Literally! Wh why in the world would someone do something like this? I don't know, but whoever did it must have felt an amazing sense of release. Can I take that as a confession, hair forehead? What? No. I feel bad for Robin. She works so hard on these. Let's pick up the pieces for her. You got it. Let's check every corner of this stage then, yeah? Uh, okay, cool. Oh, another one. How many pieces are there? Uh, thanks, Apollo. This makes five pieces in all. I think we have all we're gonna find. Okay, let's get back to where Prosecutor Gavin was shattered. I think you might want to reword that. Ta -da. Ta -da. Ta -da. Ta -da. 
Uh, well, I don't see any other big pieces lying around. Yeah, let's see if we can put this statue back together. Do we have to actually physically put it together? Oh, no, okay. Uh, all right, Apollo, you come over here and Prosecutor Gavin, if you could hold this. Oh, shit, it's gorgeous. <laughs> we did it! Not bad if I say so myself. Yeah, but don't you think it's strange? We put the statue back together, but look. What's with all these leftover white pieces? Hmm, these two look like they go together. And these pieces too. Um, Athena, what do you think you're doing? Don't stop me now! The artist inside me wants to get out and have a good time! Great. So... What is it? Ah, uh, it's the goddess of law holding a pair of scales in one hand and a sword in the other. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. You know what this is? You know what this is, everyone? We have a photo of it? What a weird statue, huh? Hmm. Hmm. That's quite the feat you pulled off there, Froline. Ah, oh, phew! I love that feeling you get after you work really hard on something. No, no, no. I knew who it was. I meant to ask what it's doing here. Not sure. There's no statue like this in the stage plans. Still, I could swear I've seen the statue somewhere before. Yep. The more we learn, the deeper the rabbit hole goes. At least we're moving in the right direction. Let's keep searching the stage for clues. I've been wondering about something this whole time. You know that pool at the edge of the stage? Which pool? Uh, you mean this? It has a wire that goes off and connects to something somewhere. Suspicious. Oh, wait, is this the banner? Oh. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck! Uh-oh. Clavier outside of court seems kind of cool. I know, and I hate it! I hate it! I hate how cool they made him in this game. Because he was such an asshole in the last one. I f fuck. <laughs> Makes me upset. Uh... And this wire's for hanging banners over the stage. One of the policemen who was here earlier was checking out how it worked. Oh, so that's why the banner looks like it's out of place. Hmm. The banners are hung and removed from the art room over there. Uh. That's the art room over there? As in the scene of the crime? The bingo fro line. It's still crawling with cops, though. Hey! Anyone in the art room? Ah, damn it. <laughs> oh, it's you people. <laughs> Injustice we trust. Ah, it's Detective Fulbright. Injustice we trust. Is that some kind of a greeting between you two? Detective Fulbright, can you lower that banner from there? Of course, just leave it to me. Uh... How's that? <sighs> Phew. Thanks, Detective! Injustice we trust! Ha ha ha! Always glad to help! Injustice we trust! <laughs> uh... So, is that some kind of greeting between you two, or not?
Well, it looks like the banner's down now. Let's go take a look. Uh-oh. Okay, let's go. Injustice we trust. Look at this banner. I don't think it would flap very well in the wind. An unflappable banner? Hey, I like that. It goes perfectly with the unflappable lawyers and unflappable rockers. It's like it was made for this very stage. Look at this. The bottom part's all knotted up. Let me try and unravel it. Huh. Weird. Uh-oh. Jeez, did you really have to? And don't come across an unflap. You don't come across an unflappable banner every day. Athena, there's some things that have to yield forces beyond themselves. Yield two forces beyond themselves, sorry. What a cruel world we live in. Hey, a scrap of paper was caught up inside. It's it's blowing away. I got it! Wait. Yeah! Hey, great catch, huh? Ooh, October Hue 120. Hmm, okay. October Hue 120. What's that supposed to mean? A test score, maybe? Pretty impressive when you consider that 100 is a perfect score. I don't see how even Hue can get beyond perfect. Froline, shall we inspect that banner again now that it has been unraveled? Let's do it! This is the emblem that's on Junie's school uniform. Hey, you're right. Wait a sec. It's hard to see against the red material, but look. There's a dark red stain here, just under the emblem. This banner was on a wire connected to the art room. Right, and the art room is where the murder occurred. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? This stain might be from the victim's blood. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait, is that it? Is that everything I have to do here? Oh no, we should probably examine um, the statue, right? Have we already done that? No, we haven't. Oh, there's several things to examine, actually, we haven't done yet. Um, let's go here. Um, hey! Look what I made! Not bad, huh? You're like a recording artist who samples other people's work and calls it their own. Well, you know what they say. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. <laughs> in any case, we have a statue smasher in addition to a killer to catch now. Nine. I suspect they might be one in the same. This statue doesn't look anything like you or Mr. Wright. The goddess bearing scales and a sword. She's a symbol of fairness and strength. She knows she doesn't need a shield. <laughs> but she and her symbols were shattered along with the statue of you and Mr. Wright. This is a direct cha uh, challenge to the rule of law. Well, if they want to fight, they've got one. Whoa, take it down a notch, tiger. Let's save the fighting for when we find our culprit. The Dark Age of the Law! Phew! That was a whole lot of poking around in such a short time. Does that mean you're satisfied? Actually, there was one more thing I wanted to check out. See that metal fence back there? There's just that one segment, so it seems out of place. It looks like they were in the process of removing them after the stage was set up. But they were never able to finish on account of the murder. We should take a look if you think it could be important. Looks like something was, was dragged along the, uh... 
the vents or whatever. Yeah. Hmm, this track looks man-made. Hey, you're right. And it looks like it starts from behind the backdrop. Maybe a big muddy pro wrestler was hiding back there. Well, that was totally random, but we'll never know until we take a look. Looks like something was being dragged through here, and this is where it started. Yeah, but whatever it was, it's long gone. Must have been pretty heavy. Perhaps it was used in setting up the school festival. Uh, then I guess it wasn't a pro wrestler. Still, this could be something important. Is that a reference to the last case? Maybe, actually. Could be. Um... Well, that's about it for the stage. Right! I think we'd better search the art room next. Uh, no, this is not a future case. The one that happened before this was before this. The, uh, Tenmataro one. Because Apollo- it was Apollo's case, but Athena just arrived. Yeah. Uh... I think I'll hang around here for a while, but make sure to tell me once you find it, yeah? Find what? What else? The Gavineer's banner that disappeared from the stage. You never know, it just might be connected to the case at hand. Really? Or does he just want his banner back? S don't tell me. So in short, that's... Huh? Hey! Where are you going, Miriam? What are you doing? Oh, yep, yeah, gone. That box, it just took off running. I have a pretty good idea who that is, as I suspect you do too. Come on, we can't afford to have any weird articles written about us. The maintenance area is over in that direction. After that box. Okay. Uh, it has been an hour since we started streaming. I need more water. I need to put eye drops in my eyes because they are burning because, uh, chicken was fried. <laughs> in my apartment earlier. And we opened the windows, but it is, it is bothering me. So I gotta put eye drops in. I'll be right back, everyone. Uh, please go get some water. Stay hydrated. I will see you soon. Hello, I have returned. With some tea. I got some eye drops in my eyes. So they feel better. <laughs> um, I got some more water. I am ready. Okay. Maintenance area. Kitty. Uh, okay. Miriam, you're liable to get tossed in the garbage truck if you hang around here. I'm just an empty box, and that's what you do with them. You throw them away. Hey. Did you change boxes? I like the new look. <laughs> Wipe the past clean with crime cleaner. Get sparkling clean with brute force. Danger toxic. It's very good. Crime cleaner. <laughs> what does it matter anymore? I was a complete failure in court today. My work, my pride, my dreams, everything I've worked so hard for, gone. If you come out with your own line of cleaning products, I have a name for you. Yeah, right? Sorry, Miss Scuttlebutt. But... Doesn't believing you had a scoop when you really didn't make you a failure as a reporter? Uh, a failure as a reporter? <laughs> <coughs> Uh... 
come to think of it. Calling her a failure as a reporter might have been a bit extreme. I wish I remembered anything at all from my philosophy class that I took in high school. But I don't. <laughs> like, I literally remember nothing from that class. Like, at all. I know we had to do- I know I did a project on mor uh, morality at some point. But... I don't remember anything other than that. I feel bad, too, because it was like, I remember it being a good course. I remember enjoying it. Ugh. Scold me, despise me, pack me away where I'll never see the light of day. I've been cast aside to waste away into a big pile of mushy paper mache. I kind of feel responsible for this, but... Now's our chance to prod her for information while she's vulnerable. I bet that's what you were just thinking. What kind of a person do you think I am? You read me like a book. Okay, Miriam. Scuttling scuttlebutt. And that was you on the stage earlier, wasn't it? Why'd you run off like that? Uh, take a look at this. Why are you showing me a burnt up old rag? Oh shit, it's the, it's the fucking Gaviniers thing. Oh yeah, there was a fucking incinerator over there. Of course there fucking was. Okay. <laughs> If I know one thing about Ace Attorney, I know that it likes its incinerators. Uh... Wait, it's really hard to see, but I think that's the Gavineer's logo there. So is this the banner that disappeared? It's all burnt up. D don't look at me, I just happened to find it in the incinerator. Incinerator? Did Blackwell actually make good on his threat to burn her box? <laughs> Wait, is that what happened? Is that why she has a new box? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, we should probably try to find out whether someone tried to destroy this on purpose. Yeah, this banner is sounding less and less unrelated to our case, Apollo. Oh boy. The depths of despair. Um, Miriam, I owe you an apology. I shouldn't have said you were a failure as a reporter. S -s 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 too late. I already decided journalism isn't for me. The last step is to erase all the photos on my PC. I'm really gonna do it. Here goes. 5%. 10%! Four years of my life down the drain! Shouldn't we stop her, Athena? Miriam, you should keep publishing your paper. I didn't mean what I said, okay? You didn't mean it? Oh, no, my photos! Stop! Cancel! Abort! <laughs> Did you stop it in time? Deletion progress, 99% complete. There are only two pictures left! <laughs> what are you gonna do now, Athena? You owe it to her to make it right. I- I know! <laughs> oh, Miriam. Damn. No cloud backups, huh? Uh, your photo technique. D don't worry, Miriam. Your photos may be gone. But the memory of your photographic genius will live on forever in all of our hearts. 
Ooh, Athena. That was cringeworthy. Hey, Miriam, check this out. You took some amazing photos of the three of them. I'm sure they really appreciated it. Obviously, I'm the ace member of the newspaper club. The only member, in fact. Enjoy my tea. Thank you. It's actually iced tea. It's just, it's Arizona iced tea, but like half, half that and half water. Because it's too sweet otherwise. Sorry, Arizona iced tea, green tea. Apparently there's a difference between the two. I only just found this out recently. Um, I like this happy Miriam animation. Uh, I know this won't make up for the photos you lost, but here's- here are your newspapers back. Take them. Uh, there's no rest for the- oh wait, sorry. There's no rest for the wicked. I plan on pursuing those three for as long as I live. Miriam, uh, why are you so obsessed with Juniper, Hugh, and Robin? Uh, obsessed? I'm not obsessed with them. It's just, they were so close, ever since their freshman year, so, uh, well... Athena, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, I think that's the only explanation. Wh wait a second, you're not thinking what I think you're thinking! Objection. That's exactly what he's thinking, Miriam. You want in on their little trio. <coughs> 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 How could you possibly know that? Ugh, that's one abused laptop. <coughs> my laptop won't turn on. Never thought my life would end so soon. A mere 17 years. Uh, uh, now I feel bad. Oh, I know. Yeah, I really, I really like Miriam. Miriam, we have a laptop at the office. We'd be happy to lend it to you. Huh? Y you have a laptop I could use? Sure, but on one condition. I want you to ask Junie, Hugh, and Robin if you can hang out with them. What? Like I could ever do that. Sorry, but that's the deal if you want to borrow our laptop. You scare me sometimes, Athena. You're like, good cop, bad cop, all rolled into one. <coughs> Fine. I'll do it, if that's all you want. Yay! I'll be by later to bring you the laptop. What? wait It's not like I owe you anything, but, uh, here... New photos, oh. Oh, thanks! Uh, oh, it's a set of pictures! Looks like they're setting up the stage. Hmm. Yeah, I took them when they were putting up the stage's backdrop into place. Wow, you sure have an eye for photography. From what I can make out anyway. These are the last two photos that didn't get deleted. They're all yours. Wait, does she have, like, a fucking printer in her... in her box as well? Like, an entire office in there? <laughs> uh... Add it to the court record. Well, see ya around, scary li scary lawyer lady. That was really impressive, Athena. What's next? Well, I'd like to talk to Hugh or Robin if possible. Okay, let's walk around and see if we can find them. Okay. We've already asked about those things. Let's go move. To the art room? I guess we're going to the art room, right? Check things out in here? Oh. Oh yeah, we haven't been here yet, I guess, right? Hmm. 
Hmm. That's a that's a painting of Junie. Actually, there's multiple paintings of Junie in there. Wait, there's three. Is that a sculpture? Is that supposed to be a sculpture of Junie on the other side? Okay. Hold on. <laughs> there's a lot going on here in this art room. Well, here it is. The art room where the grisly crime occurred. Let's start looking. Stop right there. This is an active crime scene. No unauthorized personnel allowed. What? Can't you make an exception? You won't even notice we're, uh... Freeze! I don't think so. No exceptions. Now move along. Nothing to see here. Ugh! He doesn't seem very accommodating this time. Let's try again later. Really? We can't do anything here? Okay. Uh, hmm. Where else should we go? Hey! That's you over there! This fucking guy. Ugh! You. We wanted a word with you, if you don't mind. If it was Mr. Wright, then sure, but you two? Meh. I knew it! There's a hint of discord in Hugh's voice. Uh, you're not getting off that easy. After all, you're a possible suspect, plus you actually confessed in court. <laughs> Whatever. So what do you want from me? But make it brief. I don't have a lot of time, and I assume you don't either. Yeah, he does seem very disinterested in this whole affair, but I'm worried- I wonder if he's the murderer, though, then. Anyway. Why did you confess? About your confession today. You weren't serious about that, were you? Let's just say I had no choice thanks to a certain lawyer who failed to get the job done. Ooh. Oops. <laughs> uh, so you're really prepared to take the blame for this? Not gonna happen. The voice on the tape is female, so that rules me out. Let's put it this way. You don't actually believe that ridiculous play on words, do you? Well, my confession is just like that. A means to an end, or as we say around here. The end justifies the means. Ugh. But I actually do believe the voice is shouting Hugh O'Connor. Juniper's confession was quite advantageous for the real killer. But if Robin or I were actually the killer, we wouldn't have confessed. It's that simple. Even you should be capable of such reasoning, or have I overestimated you? You'll make a great lawyer someday. I mean, you seem to enjoy getting under people's skin. Hmm. Could Hugh and Robin's confessions really prove their innocence instead of their guilt? This is gonna take some serious thinking on my part. Relation to Blackquill? Uh, it sure looked like Prosecutor Blackquill was twisting your arm to testify earlier today. Is there some sort of secret he's using against you? I've no intention of saying anything more. Now, if you'll excuse me. Hold. I am not through with you yet. Heh. <laughs> It seems the rogue prosecutor has it out for me. Uh, leave, and we might discuss you know what. Ugh, no! No, wait. Uh, one little statement and Mr. Cool loses it? What's that all about? I changed my mind. I'll stay and testify. Uh, you really are a rank amateur. Even if that were true, you'd think I'd open up to you. 
so he's not denying it. That secret might be causing the discord in his voice. Then again, we had the same problem with Junie and Robin. Huh. You're just wasting your time and mine. Next question. Quartz Planner. Oh yeah, his name's written all over that fucking thing. I'm hoping that Blackpool's Hawk is the key to this whole murder. Blackpool's Hawk is the fucking best character. <laughs> Uh, very, very good bird. Good bird. Quartz planner. About that meeting with Professor Court on the 23rd. Why did she want to see you? I have no intention of telling you. You'll have to force it out of me any way you can. Ugh. Professor Means strikes again! Then again, Hugh is in the lawyer course. But didn't Professor Court used to say that any good result- uh, that the only good result is the truth? So why don't you drop this whole charade and just tell me the truth? The truth? How can you be so sure it will help you solve this case? The truth isn't necessarily your friend, nor Juniper's for that matter. No, you're wrong. I don't care what anyone says. I'm gonna defend Junie the right way, using the truth. That's the only way to honor Junie's wishes and Professor Court's memory. I see. Very well, Miss Sykes. I'll testify tomorrow about the truth you're so interested in. Q. But. <laughs> uh oh. It don't look to me if something happens to Juniper because of it. Understand? What? What's that supposed to mean? What a terrible thing to say. I thought you guys were friends. Thanks for lurking, Joan. If I don't see you again, have a wonderful night. Uh... Yeah, we were. Until just recently, actually. Were? I already told Juniper, so I might as well tell you. I don't really care about her anymore. What? Why? And just as I have my secrets, she has a side you've never seen. Juniper's not all sunshine and rainbows like you think she is. What? What are you saying? Junie's so pure and sweet. What the fuck? This conversation's over. I said I don't have a lot of time, and I mean it. What a fucking dick. Ah. Uh, Hugh, wait! He's gone. He doesn't care about her anymore. What? Why would he say that? That didn't go so well. I guess we'll just have to pin our hopes on his testimony tomorrow. Athena, what do you say we head over to the art room? Might be a nice change of pace. Hopefully the police have completed their investigation. All right. We don't really have much time left anyway. Okay, can we now investigate the art room without, um... Bobby Fulbright, that's his name, getting in the way. Okay. So, if you remember, this- that's actually the demon with the paintbrush is that elephant. Do you remember the, um, the very first case in this game, uh, with the- with Ted Tonate and, uh, Junie's plush? Like, the- what was it? Bum Rap Riney and... Yeah, that's one of them. I can't remember the other na the name of the other one. This is the other one. The elephant one. So yeah. A little callback there. Um, third floor art room. <laughs> Why, if it isn't my little lawyer friends again. Thanks again for lowering that school banner for us earlier. Don't mention it. Helping those in need is what my brand of justice is all about. 
Right. So this art room was where the murder actually occurred? Hmm, that's right. You can see it with the- you can't see it with the naked eye, but there's blood on the floor. That area roped off in the middle of the room marks the spot. The police investigation is done, so if you want to look around, knock yourselves out. Okay. Let's talk. Find anything new, Detective Fulbright? Ha <laughs> ha good question. Unfortunately, the answer is nothing much yet. He sure is confident for having found nothing. But if we're talking outside of the art room, there has been a major breakthrough. Oh dear! Unless I find out what that is, I don't know what I shall do. No need for the theatrics. I was told I could fill you in on this one. Oh my gosh! Hello there, Sleepy Mareep and Party of Six. Welcome everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, let me do a shout out to Sleepy Mareep. You were playing art! I saw a small preview of your stream. Which looked like a little, a little uwu face, I think. <laughs> At some point. I hope your stream went well. <laughs> also, hello there, Sink. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Metroid Crime. I'm a variety streamer. I'm currently playing, uh... Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. Um, we're, like, in the middle of an investigation right now. Um, and I do a whole bunch of, like, voice acting and stuff for it. Yeah. Uh, I did an oh woe and an ooh woo emote. Aw, cute, cute, and he got broken on stream tonight. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, man. Well, that sounds like fun. It sounds like a good stream. Uh, I'm glad I have this time to take a break and drink some water or some liquid, some tea and some water. Both of those things. Had to go on break and cry. Oh, it, it was a, for a good reason, right? For a good reason. Not because something bad happened, right? <laughs> she got huge rated? Oh, whoa. That's awesome. Yo, that's really cool. Yay! Got to 290 followers. Yo! Oh my god, that's fucking amazing. That's awesome! That is awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> oh my gosh. That Yeah, that sounds like an amazing stream. In five minutes. How many how many people came with the with the raid? That's fucking sweet. That is so cool. I'm so glad. I'm so happy for you, Marie. <laughs> it wasn't a raid. Oh, just a random kind person. Oh, interesting. Damn. Well, welcome everyone who came over from Marie's channel. Um... It's time to get goes cozy. I'm just like, I'm doing, this is basically like story time right now. We're just going through and investigating this art room to figure out how someone might have gotten murdered. So a little, you know, co cozy in quotes here. <laughs> anyway, uh, no need for the theatrics. I was told I could fill you in on this one. Wow, you saw right through me, detective. I'm impressed. Looking to get arrested for murder via, uh, via unwanted flattery, are we? The breakthrough. Tell me about it. So, what's the major breakthrough you mentioned? You want to know? Do you really want to know? You really, really? Come on, just tell us already. Ugh, you're no fun. Anywho. We got the results of the voice print analysis back. The voice print? You mean for this tape recorder? Exactly. The voice belonged to the suspect, Miss Woods, beyond a shadow of a doubt. 
Uh, see right here? They analyzed the voice on the tape inside and out. Yes, I did see- Sank, I totally saw those fucking leaks. It is such good news. They were talking about DGS 1 and 2 being localized, and then also, like, the seventh game. Or, yeah, it's seven, right? A yeah, it's seven. The seventh game coming out? Like, fucking crazy shit. I am so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> I hope it turns out to be real. Hope it's not a fake leak. I don't know if I can take that. Uh, see you right here. They analyzed the voice on this tape inside and out. And you thought the voice on the tape was saying Hugh O'Connor. <laughs> Thanks for the good laugh, Miss Sykes. Ah, uh, he's the last person I want laughing at me. So now there's evidence of Juniper shouting you're a goner around the time of death. If we were to take this as truth, how are we supposed to make sense of it? I don't know. I can't think of any reason why Junie would shout that in the first place. Okay. I guess we should examine, huh? Um, let's start with something that seems unrelated to the case. So not this, not this, and not this. Um, let's look at this art. It kind of looks like there's a prosecutor's badge at the top of this statue. But it's not if you look real close. Another strange, difficult to understand work of art. Oh, look, it has a title. Guilty, guilty, guilty. <laughs> real creative. Art. Either it's too abstract to understand, or as subtle as a sledgehammer. <laughs> Apollo, known art hater. Three busts sitting on a shelf. A judge, a defendant, and either a lawyer or a prosecutor. The bearded one must be the judge, and the bummed out looking one, the defendant. <laughs> Look! There's another one out there that's fallen onto the floor. I wonder which one fell, the lawyer or the prosecutor? Think, Apollo, think! This could tell us how tomorrow's trial will go! I'll just wait for tomorrow's horoscopes, thanks. Apollo's just mad because Art doesn't concede if you shouted it. Yeah, right? Oh, we have to inspect this clock, too. Hold on. I'm gonna do this first. There's so many things to inspect in this room. Hey, look! That's you on this mobile, Apollo. A red demon. A red demon? Looks more like a snake curled around a brush to me. No, no, no. See the antenna and the yellow spots on its back? Anyone can see it's a ladybug. Hmm... I guess we'll have to agree to disagree. Fine! We can investigate this further at a later date. Agreed. Okay, let's do that. You okay with that, Athena? I really regret bringing this up. Uh, okay, here? A picture of a girl wearing a floral hat. Oh, it has the artist's name right here. C. Court. Oh, wow. Professor Court must have painted this. Apollo, are you fucking serious? So this is what they consider art? I really don't get it. I swear I've seen this girl before. There's an air of fragility about her, and those pity-inducing eyes. Who is this again? Her name's on the tip of my tongue. It's a fucking- it's a painting of Junie! Isn't that a mock trial script? Actually, there's a whole bunch of them here. Let's see. It looks like everyone from the judge course submitted one. The victim Constance Court was the fine art club's advisor. So, she probably spent a lot of time up here in addition to her other duties. And this isn't where I'd keep a bunch of scripts, but I'd wager that's how they wound up here. 
Poor, stressed out, overworked Professor Court. I know exactly how that feels. You must because your desk always looks like a tornado hit it. Ugh, you're one to talk, Apollo. Me? What about Mr. Wright? Maybe we should rename the firm Wright Stuff All Over the Place Agency. Uh. Music feels like a game show? That is Bobby Fulbright's theme song. A picture of a girl wearing a floral hat. Oh, it has the artist's name right here. I also miss Gumshoe. We haven't heard from Gumshoe in so long. It's sad. Uh, R. Newman. Wow, Robin must have painted this. Is this Juniper? The clothes are different, but... Oh, look, there's a piece of paper stuck to the back. Let's see what it says. Completely lacks Professor Quartz artistry. Must keep practicing. Robin. Huh. I think this is plenty good myself. I wonder what it would have looked like if Professor Court had painted Juniper. I bet it would have been really artistic looking. It's this one. It's this one! She painted this one! Right here! Duh! You guys are supposed to be investigating. How do you not know that? <laughs> A mock trial script on the floor and nearby an envelope marked use. I wonder if Miriam's script was ever really inside that envelope. Let's see here. Buy Miriam Scuttle... Buy Miriam Scuttlebutt. And the title is... Rogue et Noir. Crimson Blood and Dark Judgment. I wouldn't take part in that mock trial if she begged me. It says here that there are special rules allowing the payment of bribes while court is adjourned. Oh, and you can bring in up to $3 worth of fabricated evidence. It also says... Welcome to the darkest muck trial ever! Where the end justifies the means. The prosecution claims that this is the script that was supposed to have been used. But the scripts were selected by Professor Court, considering how much she valued the truth? I seriously doubt that she'd pick, pick a script entitled Crimson Blood and Dark Judgment. Wow, you have that title memorized already? Uh, okay. We're gonna look at this body. Hey! This is the area with the rope around it. That's where we detected a large bloodstain. In short, the victim was stabbed here or somewhere close by. The fact that there's no visible blood means it was wiped up with something, right? Right, but if we were able to detect- uh, But we were able to detect trace amounts of blood. Merely wiping it up does not remove all evidence of wrongdoing, and that... In a nutshell is justice, right? I'd appreciate it if you'd let me have the cool lines. Nope. Uh, look! A piece of pottery. It looks like it's already been fired. I bet Robin made it. And I bet it won't last long, not with the way she deals with her own work anyway. Yeah, it seems like such a waste. I mean, this one already has some color on it. It looks just like bloodstains the way the glaze was dribbled onto it. Just like... Bloodstains? Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Hey there, Lo-Fi Samurai! I hope you're doing well tonight. Thanks for stopping by. Uh... In injustice we trust! That does look like bloodstains. We'd better examine it at once. I get it. The victim was stabbed in the middle of the room where the big, big bloodstain is. I'm okay, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm just doing some voice acting right now. Going through this case and trying to figure out who, who did it. Who did it? Also staying hydrated. Hmm. 
and then he brought over then brought over here at which point some of her blood dripped onto these pieces that means the body very well could have been dropped from this window in the mock trial script the body was dropped onto a mat then a ball cart was used to move it over to the stage the maintenance area is below this room, and the storehouse there has a mat and ball cart. So, even the moving of the body was carried out just like in the script. That's fucked up. The killer sure had a thing for Junie's script. Well, what did you expect? That's why we suspected the defendant in the first place! Well, you're wrong, and I'm gonna prove it in court. Uh, okay, let's look at the clock here, which should be a different time, if if I'm right about this. Uh, this is the clock that created that major problem for Junie. Let's take a second look. Closer look, sorry. Oh, damn it. Uh, man! Okay. Don't waste your time. I've checked it and it's 100% accurate. You sure? How'd you check it? Of course I'm sure. I compared it to my own watch, see? Um... Detective Fulbright, didn't you notice that your watch had stopped? It has? Ah! Ah! This is unacceptable! We obviously can't rely on him. Let's take a look for ourselves. <laughs> Let's see. Wait a second. It's ahead by one whole hour! Well, detective? Ah! Oh. But, but... This clock must have also been an hour ahead when this photo was taken. If so, that would fit perfectly with Judy's testimony. Prosecutor Blackwell won't like this. I almost feel sorry for the detective. Almost. You can at least pretend to feel sorry by wiping that big grin off of your face. W w wait just one minute. The clock is an hour ahead right now, sure. But what proof do you have that it was running ahead on the day of the crime? Hmm. Huh, that's a good question. Wait! I think I might just have something. Detective Fulbright, you would agree that there is a moon outside this window, right? Uh... Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Ah, <laughs> uh, we have a time when this photo was taken. Sure, it looks like a nice drawing of a crescent moon. But if you look out that window in the back with the winch attached, but if you look at that window in the back with the winch attached to it, You'll see that the only view to be had is the opposite side of the school building. No, no, no. It's not even daylight savings. Oof. Then what's this moon doing here? Hmm. I wonder. Prosecutor Gavin, you were scheduled to perform at the school festival, weren't you? That's right. But I hadn't seen the stage until yesterday. That backdrop with the starry sky and big crescent moon isn't half bad. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck! <laughs> isn't this the same as the one painted on the stage backdrop? The proof's right here, detective. This shows it was 6 p.m. when the photo was taken. Um... Is there... 6.01. Yeah, hey, there we go. Perfect. Present this. I know what this moon really is. And if you look at this photo, you'll know too. This shows where that moon in the photo came from and what th and the truth of Junie's testimony. What? what what Where? Where does it show that? If you look right here, it'll all become crystal clear. Can I just present the back of this? 
They were still prepping the stage, so its backdrop wasn't in place yet. This photo shows them in the process of moving the backdrop into position. I can see that. That's the big board hanging there. The size matches, too. But there's no picture. That's a crucial detail. It is, but I believe what we're seeing in this photo is the back of the board. The back of the... That's right. And around 6 p.m. when this was taken, a photo of that same board was being taken from the front. What do you mean, the front? The front is against the wall. That's where you're wrong. What about the window? Remember how we said the moon shouldn't even exist in this photo? Take a good look. Are you suggesting that the moon is the one on the backdrop? Exactly. In short, this photo was taken while the backdrop was being moved. And, as you can see here, it was around 6 when the backdrop was being set in place. Oh shit. Yet surprisingly, this time it is not daylight savings that fuck things up. <laughs> Unlike the other two cases that that happened in. Uh. So, the art room clock was running fast at least as far back as the day of the murder. How, ow, ow, how can I ever face Prosecutor Blackwell now? Is that a common occurrence in this game? Yes. Yes, it, it is. I think it happened in the first case, and I think it happened sometime in the se like the first case of the series, and then sometime in the second game as well. Maybe the third game also. But yeah. <laughs> hey there, Winter. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Did see your Twitch. Oh, nice, sweet. <laughs> Uh, how? Ow, ow, ow. Oh, I already read this. Yes, I just blew a hole in the piece of, uh, in a piece of the prosecution's evidence. Nice, we did it. We did a good thing. Okay, we have to investigate. What, is there anything else? It's the winch, right? It's literally just the winch. Examine. Some wire and a winch. So this is how they reeled the banana, the banana. I almost read that as bananas. Been playing too much bug snacks. <laughs> uh, some wire and a winch. So this is how they reeled the banners in and out. There's a nice view of the stage from there. Prosecutor Gavin is still standing in front of that broken statue. So it really wasn't you, Apollo. Don't worry, you can tell me. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> Ah! I'll never clear my name unless we catch the real culprit. What's this? Hey! It's gone. Remember that strange statue in the school camera photo? You're right! Wonder where that is? Robin's a member of the Fine Arts Club. Maybe she should- maybe she could shed some light on this. Well, I think we've examined pretty much everything we can. By the way, did Prosecutor Blackwell happen to tell you anything about tomorrow's trial? Injustice we trust! It's no use trying to pry more information out of me. Having just learned that the clock had been one hour fast... ...means we're back to square one concerning the suspect's actions that day. Hmm. I wonder what the main argument will be about now. Wait. Hold on. It was the- Oh yeah, I guess the clock also was fast. The clock was fast by an hour, but we don't know if it was daylight savings or not. Uh... How the body- Oh wait. Yeah, how the body was moved would be my guess, but Prosecutor Blackwell's got his own plans. Oh? Does he now? Red binoppers, yeah. Um, Detective Fulbright. Try as you might, I won't say another word about the investigation. I do watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I haven't seen the most recent... I don't know how far... I don't remember how far into that show I am. I feel like I might be missing, like, two seasons of it. 
Uh, mm, no, I wasn't gonna ask about that. I was just wondering if he'd seen Robin. Uh, oh, you mean Miss Robin Newman? She was here just a moment ago. And she mumbled something about watching videos in the lecture hall. Video? What video? Thanks, detective. Athena, I think we should stop by the lecture hall. Uh, right, let's go. Winter Pants Sue Hunter Back to the 90s is really good. Is that an anime? Oh, it's a visual novel. Oh, not pervy. Oh, interesting. Huh, I've never heard of that. Um, okay, we're going to the lecture hall. <sighs> How much of this do we have? Okay, we should take a break. Let's take a break. We don't have too much left. I mean, we're probably going to be here for another half an hour, I'm assuming. Um. Yeah, it's break time. Break time, break time. I'll be right back to everyone. Um, I need some more water, definitely. I need to, I is very dry in my office. Like I am like I had to put hand cream on. I had to put eye drops in. Uh, I don't know why. It's just I guess it's fucking winter, right? <laughs> anyway, gah. I will be right back, everyone. I'll see you soon. Hello, I have returned. Thank you so much, Ghost Girl Blues, for the raid, even though you're not here. I'm still going to do a shout out because, uh, Ghost Girl Blues. And you were playing a Final Fantasy thing, right? Yes, yes. I tuned in and I saw the the cute the cute chibis. <laughs> I hope you had a great stream. Thank you so much for the raid. I appreciate it. Um, we are doing stuff. Yeah, we're we're about to talk to uh Robin, I believe, and figure out some stuff, hopefully. Um I'm so well hidden, I know, right? How did I know? <laughs> uh, there she is, Robin! Hey, Robin! Oh, Athena! Apollo! I'm gonna continue to do the screaming voice for her, by the way, I'm sorry. What are you watching there? <laughs> oh, it just so happens to be a video of the mock trial! I had to use a bit of coercion to get it, but the end justifies the means, right? There it is again. Professor Mean sure has a lot of influence around here. Care to look into the true connection between the murder and the mock trial with me? Sounds great, but do you mind if we ask you some questions first? <laughs> sure, I'll tell you anything, you W-A-N-T! Why did you confess? About your confession today. Why'd you do it? Because! Juniper hasn't done anything wrong. I had to stop the trial by any means possible. Right. Uh, the end justifies the means. So you're a follower of Professor Means too? The four-letter spelling gimmick is odd. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand it either. I'm trying to figure out how I should be like... Yeah, I, I don't... We'll see. <laughs> Uh, Professor Means is a wonderful teacher, as was Professor Court. I like them B-O-T-H. Um, Crystal Chronicles is the Dark Souls of Final Fantasy games, and I hate that thing about calling everything Dark Souls, but there was a part where a Black Knight went hollow, so, okay. Okay, yeah, that does sound pretty Dark Souls-ish. Um... She brushed that one off like a pro. Uh, but with that style of justice, you run the risk of breaking the law. Well, I'm prepared to quit school because of this case. What? what? Why? I, I, I want to be an artist! That's what I really want, man! 
But no! My parents forced me to study to become a prosecutor! But if the trial went south, you'd have to drop out and give up on being a prosecutor. And that's what you're really after, isn't it? Uh-huh. Talk about someone who literally changes at the bat of an eyelash. I guess she's been dealing with her own problems, too. That totally makes sense. Yeah, I suppose, but that doesn't make what she did right. Uh, day of the crime. Yeah, Robin is under a ton of pressure. Uh... Could you tell us about what you were doing on the night of the murder? Finishing a statue! I was on stage until the last bell. That's right. You made the statues of Mr. Wright and Prosecutor Gavin, didn't you? Imagine Robin as a prosecutor versus Apollo as a lawyer. They need to provide earplugs. I know, right? <laughs> Just a yelling competition. Oh, um, yes I did! Both of them! This is just a formality, but can you prove you were making the statues at that time? C can I prove it?! You think I'm the killer now?! No, no, that's not what I meant. Both Hugh and Robin were still at the school after 7pm. But neither of them could prove exactly what they were doing. Every time they object, windows would shatter. <laughs> Could one of them really have murdered Professor Court? Okay, I, I hope this isn't oh, gonna be an awkward conversation here. Now that the secret's out... Hmm. Have there been any problems now that everyone here knows you're a girl? <laughs> no worries there! I discussed the matter with Professor Court some time ago. I told her I wanted to let everyone know I was really a girl. And just today I found out that she spoke with the school administration on my behalf. Wow, they must really like you. I know, right? But now I can finally be myself here at school. I don't have to hide the fact that I love girly clothes! That's why, Athena, I simply must have this, and this, by any means possible! What? But this is evidence we need for that trial. Sorry, but no can do. Ugh. Don't be a party pooper, Athena! Come on, please! Pretty please. Okay. Stage costume-related evidence taken in classic and justifies the means style. Um, oh darn it. Anyway, thank you again, Athena! Thank you for revealing who I really am! I wanted everyone to know before the snitch found out. The snitch? Sounds like a new lead. Who's the snitch? There's a rumor going around that one of the students here is a snitch. I hear they're watching everything we do, our activities, our relationships, our interests, and reporting it all to one of the professors. Hmm. But why would anyone do that? Officially, I heard it's to seek out misconduct among the student body. But, rumor has it the grades were being brought, bought, bought! and sold through the surveillance network. That's bribery. The situation at Themis Legal Academy is even worse than I thought. I know, please don't be Miriam, I know. I know. While all this is important stuff, I still want to ask them about that thing in the art room. I'll have to present some evidence to show her what I'm talking about, though. Okay, um... In the art room. What are we asking about this? Are we asking about the statue? Um... Is that... Ooh! Lady Justice! That's so 
T-E-C-U-T-E. <laughs> you think this is cute? Yeah, totally. The balance of the scales, the keenness of the sword, the cracks running all the way up. That last one's only because I put it back together. Ooh, I totally know what you mean. It's that feeling you get when something is so cute you want to smash it to bits? R-I-G-H-T. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, but that sounds more like a case of the crazy than a fondness for the cute. I don't know if that was what I had to present, but I liked that. Um... The banner? Mm. Let's ask about this. Hold on. Uh, Robin, I just remembered something I wanted to ask you. This photo shows a piece of art on the table. Do you know what it is? What? Whoa! Look at that unique artistic sense! That has to be one of Professor Court's creations, man! Okay, this is- this is about the statue. I think we're talking about the statue here. But I don't know why that didn't work when I presented the other- Oh yeah, okay, never mind. Because you have to make the connection that the broken statue actually is the other- Okay. Sorry. Anyway. Professor Court's artistic sense? Professor Court's artistic sense? That's a tough one. I'd say it's avant-garde and very eclectic. In other words, it's weird and all over the place. Come to think of it, that strange-looking painting in the art room was one of Professor Court's works, wasn't it? The statue in that photo was originally a statue of Lady Justice. Lady Justice? Professor Korn had planned on placing it on the judge's bench, bench in the lecture hall. <laughs> but the day before the mock trial, it broke while she was polishing it. She said she'd take it back to the art room and try to fix it somehow. So, this is the statue in its proper state? You bet! Just look at that wild silhouette. Wow, it's so C-U-T-E! I don't get it. Do you have to be an artist to appreciate stuff like this? Don't show Apollo. <laughs> Athena. The Lady Justice that you put back together on that stage... Uh... Oh, right! I didn't realize before because it was in pieces, but before it was smashed? Maybe it didn't look like Lady Justice, but more like it does in the photo. But what in the world was it doing on the stage? <laughs> if they made Pokemon shoes, would Crime want to get a pair of jiggly pumps? Yes. A hundred percent. Well, I think that about covers it. Okay! Then how about watching the mock trial video with me? What do you say? Sure. Sounds good to me. Ah, uh, so how do you want to watch it? <laughs> All classroom desks at the school have their own built-in computer, you know. Wow, this place is definitely a lot cushier than I thought. Uh, I know you guys are in a hurry, so I'll just fast forward to the important parts. Uh, let's start with the professor professor's pre-trial speech. Are these gonna be fully animated cutscenes? Oh, they are. Oh no, they're not. They're not. I have to voice act it. Good afternoon. I would like to start by thanking you for coming here today. Oh, that sounds like Professor Means. Oops. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Hold on. Good afternoon. I would like to start by thanking you for coming here today. Oh, that sounds like Professor Means. The mock trial, the crown jewel event of the school festival will begin shortly. Is the camera like this the whole time? Yeah, it's in a fixed position in front of the stage. 
When I was a student, I too could hardly wait for this day to come. Uh, they would be called Pika Shoes. Oh, that's very good indie villain. I love it. <laughs> how come the teacher's speech speeches always make me so sleepy? Oh, how come teacher's speeches always make me so sleepy? <laughs> well, let's just skip to the end of the speech. Now, let the mock trial begin. Hey! What's the deal here? Why is Genie so large in this shot? Digletto's very good winter mute. That's also a very good name for Pokemon shoes. <laughs> uh It's like fucking it's like bug snacks but for shoes and Pokemon. <laughs> it looks to me like she cut right in front of the camera. <laughs> Juniper was also in charge of the audio. Even though she was already playing a part in the mock trial itself? She had to do it to keep the script details secret. She was all over the place that day. When she wasn't in the trial, she was in the audio control room dealing with the music. Ooh, so this is what the lecture hall looks like. Looks like there's a judge's bench back by the screen and a witness stand up front. What about those balconies with the professor's names on them? Uh, those are the faculty seats. Professor Means and Professor Court were in charge of scoring the mock trial. Okay. Okay, let's fast forward this a bit. Um, I have also seen that statue, Wintermute. It's very good. Uh, and that's why the defendant is definitely guilty. Ah. That was me, could you tell? Objection. A frail co-ed used her bare hands to stab her professor with an arrow. I don't think so. You read that, uh... You read that line in the mock trial, Apollo, but you made it sound kind of weird. Cut me some slack. It was my first time reading that script. I think Juniper is going to speak next. <laughs> I didn't do it! I had suffered a breakdown and pretty much lost it. It's true, I shouted, you're a goner, but I didn't mean it. Wow, what an emotional performance. She'd put a real actress to shame. I didn't act that well enough. Apparently. Oh, maybe I'll get another chance to do it. Uh, wait, could you go back and play that scene again? You really think that's necessary? I didn't do it! I had suffered a breakdown and pretty much lost it. It's true I shouted, you're a goner. But I... I didn't mean it. Stop! Did you hear that? I think you're onto something. Let's play that last part again. I don't follow! What are you guys so excited about? I think this piece of evidence should explain it. Time to show Robin a piece of evidence that li links the line we just heard to the case. Um, is it the tape recording where it's her voice saying you're a goner? Is it this? Take that! Oh no, okay. That's it? I don't see the connection! Oh, right. What was the connection again? Come on, Athena! I know you know! I do? Really? That voice shouting, You're a goner! has come up over and over again. Time to show Robin a piece of evidence that links the line. Okay, hold on. What? Is it this one? Yeah, okay, it totally is. Okay, whatever, whatever. I mean, that was basically the same thing, wasn't it? <laughs> it's still the same thing. The, whether I presented the voice print analysis or this. Anyway. I'm sure you remember this. It contains a female voice shouting a violent threat. I'll play it for you. 
You're a goner! The voices and performances do sound similar, but... I can't believe this is happening! She was practicing lines in the snitcher scuttle, but recorded it. Yeah. 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 Um... It's just a possibility, but if the voice on this tape is really a recording... One made from the mock trial video, then that means this evidence was fabricated. Oh, no, okay, no. Unless it was... Okay, unless they recorded this, it's not her practicing the lines, but it's rather... Someone recorded this mock mock trial or whatever. And then used it and pretended, like, made made it seem like that was evidence, but it wasn't, because it's fake. I think? We'll see. Let's continue. Uh, they didn't get to do a voice print analysis in time for court today. That's why the gender of the voice became so important. And if the real killer had foreseen that gender would become key in today's trial, he would have tried to deflect attention away from himself by making the suspect female. So basically, the only one with something to gain from doing this is our sole male suspect. Wait a second! No way! Professor means credo is the end justifies the means. So it makes perfect sense that as a student who took those words to heart would fabricate evidence. We need to get that tape analyzed as soon as possible. Maybe a fake. Okay. Allow me to assist you with that. Oh, it's- no, never mind. Allow me to assist you with that. Prosecutor Gavin! At least make some kind of noise so we know you're there! <laughs> It's go big or go home with Rockstar entrances, Froline. Timing is everything. Let me make a copy of that tape right now and I'll get you the results as soon as I can. I trust that would be alright. Very much so! Thanks! Thanks, Clavier. Had to do a hair flip before he left. Well, Athena, it's almost sundown. Isn't it about time we head over to the detention center? I think Junie will agree that this is something that we could prove her innocence. Uh, that this is something that could prove her innocence. But! Will her heart really be open to accepting it? She had to have known this is what I'd find. If he doesn't do a hair flip, is, is it even worth showing up? No, it's not. <laughs> Uh, so if there was a Professor Ways at this school, would they be on the Ways and Means Committee with Professor Means? Yes. <laughs> <sighs> okay, Junie. Let's hear- let's talk. We gotta talk. And that about covers the main gist of our investigation. I see. Very interesting. You've been quite the busy beaver today. Thank you for all your hard work, Athena. Well, my time's about up, and it will be getting dark soon, so... Junie! You must be tired after being on your feet all day. You should go home and... No! Wait, you have to listen to me. I don't... I don't want to hear anymore. I know what you're gonna say, Athena. Junie! You promised! <laughs> We're gonna discover the truth behind this murder mystery! And we're gonna bring you solid evidence showing just what truth is. What that truth is. <laughs> what that truth is. And we succeed in- and if we succeed in doing that, I want you to promise that you'll accept it, Junie, no matter how hard it is to hear. Okay, but only if it's the real truth. So please, please just listen to what I have to say. Once you've heard me out, I'll let you decide what to do. Okay. Suspicions about O'Connor. The voice in this recording has been proven to be yours, Junie. And...
end. In the mock trial video, we can hear you reading your line from the script. We're having both of them analyzed now, but from what I can tell, the voices are the same. And the only one who'd benefit from faking the voice recording would be you. But that doesn't make any sense. I mean, Hugh confessed in order to protect me. This may sound strange, but his confession is a ploy to make himself look less suspicious. In other words, he was just pretending to protect you. Besides, his confession came after you and Robin had already confessed. If he hadn't confessed right then as well, wouldn't that have seemed a little suspicious? Say what you will, Athena, but none of us would hurt a fly, let alone kill someone. He was a gifted student. He gets outstanding grades and never causes trouble. Uh-oh. Hey, Apollo. You gonna trip out? Wait, Athena. My bracelet reacted just now. It did? But why? Yeah, I'm definitely- I don't trust Professor Means, like, at all. <laughs> he was repeating all of Means' stuff before, that is true. Could be. Junie, can you look me in the eye and repeat what you just said? Oh, um, none of us would hurt a fly, let alone kill someone. He was a gifted student. He gets outstanding grades and never causes trouble. Someone's lying. Now I'm sure of it. She's lying. Okay, let's perceive. I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it. Does he cause trouble? Oh, fuck. Juniper, you start coughing when you're under stress. You can't hide it from me, no matter how hard you try. When you said, and never causes trouble, co a cough escaped and made your scarf... Eh, and made your scarf flutter. As for why you were stressed, it's because you were lying. Junie, you're trying to hide Hugh's connection to this case, aren't you? And I believe that also ties into a secret about yourself. <laughs> Apollo can create an endless void behind his victims, yes. <laughs> uh, a secret about me? I don't understand. I already told Juniper, so I might as well tell you. I don't really care about her anymore. What? Why? Juniper's not all sunshine and rainbows like you think she is. He ended their friendship after he found out about Junie's secret, which means... Hugh must have felt betrayed by Junie, making her... Is she the snitch? Yeah, hey, we did it. You were Professor Court's snitch, weren't you? There's a rumor going around that one of the students here is a snitch. I hear they're watching everything we do. Our activities, our relationships, our interests. And reporting it all to one of the professors. And while fulfilling that role, you learned something about Hugh you'd rather forget. Ugh. I don't know what you're talking about. Junie, please, stop hiding things from me. I hate having to force things out of you like this. Looks like we're gonna have to do this the hard way. Time to review the evidence and see if I can prove my hypothesis. Okay. I must have something that proves Junie is the snitch and Hugh connects Hugh's connection to the case. Um...
Meet with Hugh about that report, or is it... Hold on. Is it this I have to present? Hmm... Let's try this. Right here in Professor Court's planner, it says routine report. I believe this is meant to mean when the snitch would report in to Professor Court. I also believe Professor Court planned to meet Hugh in private based on the snitch's info. And from their meeting, Hugh must have put two and two together and figured out your secret. So, you see, it all makes sense if you're... Only if you're the snitch, Junie. <laughs> oh. Uh, forgive me. Forgive me, Thena. I... I... I've been lying to you this whole time. The truth is, I... I suspected Hugh from the start. You did? Now this is surprising. I'm- I'm so sorry. I've talked about friendship so much, but I've been a terrible friend. <laughs> Juniper, I don't have that special kind of hearing that Athena does. But I don't need it to sense the pain you're feeling inside. And its intensity is directly proportional to how you feel about your friend. Am I right? <sighs> Apollo... Please, Junie, tell me why you suspected Hugh. I have a feeling that will be the key to getting to the bottom of this whole case. Let's talk. What exactly was your role as Class Snitch? <sighs> Professor Court had told me how Academy alumni had strayed from the path of justice. The Dark Age of the Law, huh? She didn't want any more of our students going astray like that. But a few others at the Academy shared her view. I need some water, hold on. I keep forgetting this bitch is hanging out here as we're talking. Ugh. I thought her ideas were beautiful, though sad and unrealistic. Yeah, Dark Age of the Law sure gets mentioned a lot. It's a big, big deal in this game. Uh, she asked you to be her eyes and ears, didn't she? I used to report to her once a month about any wrongdoings I'd seen or heard about. And that report session in her planner, the one from October 22nd, was a part of that? Yes, that's when I reported Hugh to Professor Court. She snitched on her own friend? I had accidentally overheard Hugh talking. What did you hear? He was talking to someone on the phone. I, I think it was one of his parents. And what were they talking about? Something about having paid money for good test scores. I only overheard him talking, so I never did find out who the money was going to. Oh. Oh, fuck. Wait. Do you think he paid $120 for a good score on his, uh... Oh, fuck. Ooh, okay. What? That's bribery! He was buying his way through school, and if that's the case... Then that evidence oh, that always seemed out of place might actually be about his secret. Yeah. Right here. This is bad. This is bad. <laughs> we found this while we were investigating the stage. It's got Hugh's name on it. I didn't know what the number meant at the time, but now that I'm hearing about bribes... It must mean that a bribe of 120 grand was to be paid in October. Wow, 120 grand? I thought it was like $120. <laughs> no, this is big leagues. What's more, take a look at this mark. 
That same mark is on the pages of Professor Court's planner. Hey, you're right. W wait but why would Professor Court have that kind of information in her planner? You don't really think the person who was taking the bribe money was... It's just a possibility at this point, but it may indeed have been Professor Court. But, but, but... Th that is impossible. She'd be the last person I'd ever suspect of accepting bribes. Like I said, it's just a possibility, but a rather good one. Maybe their private talk had to do with the possibility of the bribery being exposed? And what started out as a little argument soon got out of hand. It's not your fault, Junie. Anyone would have suspected Hugh if they knew what you knew. No, I don't believe that... Uh, I don't believe that alone would have driven him to murder. There's another reason why I suspected Hugh. You've got to be kidding me. There's another reason? What's the other reason? I saw Hugh around 7 p.m. the day before the mock trial. Oh, so she's finally ready to talk about that. When I... When I saw him, his... His... <coughs> oh, Athena. J Junie, are you all right? Just try to relax and tell me what happened. I, oh, fuck. I never wanted to see what I did. But I'll have to live with it, won't I? In that hallway, Hugh's hands... His hands were dripping with blood. Oh, fuck. <laughs> His hands were dripping with blood. What? But why? What am I... What am I gonna do? Deep down, I know Hugh can't be the killer. Hubert has gone zombie mode! I know, right? But my mind keeps telling me he is, no matter how hard I try to convince myself he isn't. Oh, what am I gonna do? Hugh? Hugh? He's... I... I can't take this anymore. Fina! So she hid the fact that she had seen Hugh and said she went home at six because... She wanted to avoid talking about what she saw. I have a plans. Objection. Seismic. Hello there, plans. How are you doing tonight? We're about... I'm pretty sure this is about to end. But it's nice to see you. I hope you had a good night. Um... Junie, it must have been terrible holding all of that in. But it's gonna be okay. I'll get to the bottom of this. And that's my promise from one good friend when to another. Mute. And died anyone mispronouncing seismic. <laughs> I'll be defending Juniper tomorrow. If that's okay with you, Professor Means. My main concern is whether you can defeat that prosecutor. But I won't try to stop you. I will be watching from the gallery. And shall look forward to seeing what sort of results your methods can produce. Good luck tomorrow. Now, if you would excuse me. He has to go fucking fabricate some evidence so we can he can try to get us to lose tomorrow. <laughs> like, that's what this is leading towards, right? Athena, I'm sorry. I really mean it. I wish I had trusted you from the start. You have to uncover the truth tomorrow. I know you can do it. Don't worry. We already know that the prosecution's key piece of evidence is a fake. And thanks to you, we figured out the motive, too. Let's give this our best shot, Athena. Let tomorrow be the day Juniper walks free. I wouldn't have it any other way. We should be already now. What could possibly go wrong this time? Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Don't say that! Still, there's this strange, uneasy feeling I can't shake. I'd better be imagining it. Just 
to be continued. To be continued. Overwrite. Hey, the summoning was delayed, but it worked out, didn't it? <laughs> okay, and that that is that is our Ace Attorney stream for today.